Hey guys, today I'm gonna to be making a Raspberry Pi streamer. So a lot of you guys know that I've been live streaming on YouTube recently, and I thought what I would do is add an extra camera to the setup, one that I could have uh, remote, you know, uh, even though I've got this one here and I've got my action cam, this is my action cam here. Even though I've already got these two cameras, I was thinking about adding another one, you know, remotely, kind of over behind my shoulder, looking at everything that I'm doing at the desk. Because let's be honest, probably the coolest part about this channel is what I got going on in the desk. I mean, my hands are kind of dull and God knows you don't like looking at my face. So what I was gonna do is take this Raspberry Pi and uh, set it up with the camera module to live stream. So this is a Raspberry Pi 3 Model B. The reason I'm not using the zero with the attachment, with the new camera attachment, is that, well, the zero's low powered. Uh, I mean, for live streaming, you're basically gonna wanna take the camera's picture and transcode it and then broadcast it. So really I'm looking for as much grunt as I can get. Hopefully we can do this in 1080p. So let's have a look. Already in here, I've got installed my version of Raspbian. This is just a default version of Raspbian exactly like I've made in my other videos. So why don't we plug it in? I also got this cool Pi Moroni case for my camera module. We'll be using that more later. You'll see why. I, basically, it helps me attach this thing. All right, let's just get this in the camera slot here. Now, just a little something to keep that off my desk. We should be all set. With Wi-Fi working, I just need to enter the Raspberry Pi setup menu. All right. We're going to call this one Stream Pi. We're going to use the CLI, or Command Line Interface. And as always, first thing, change password. Camera, this time, of course, we're going to enable it. One more thing to do is expand the file system. Okay, let's reboot now. Look at that. So that would have taken the picture. Sweet, okay. The great news is the camera's working. Okay, well I've still got this big mess of cables and everything, and I've still got my camera here. So what I need to do now is figure out a way to make this all nice and pretty, all wrapped in a single bundle. So let me just unplug it and get everything organized and we'll figure out how to take it to the next step. Okay guys, well I'm back from Nuthouse Hardware, the 24 hour hardware store here in New York City. They don't pay me to say stuff like that, but they are cool dudes, so I might as well say hello. Thanks to Nuthouse Hardware for hooking me up with this. This is a five by five inch piece of acrylic. And the plan is basically to put that there and then to mount this kind of, this sort of thing. And then, yeah, that's, that's kind of the plan. First things first, I'm going to uh, clean up these edges a little bit. I got some sandpaper. A little sandpaper, just gonna go sort this out a little bit. Well, it's far from perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. I don't need it to be perfect. I, I don't mind it being a little rough on the edges. This isn't really a presentation piece. It's just to hold my camera. So, my favorite block of wood, my favorite drill, and my drill bits. I'm gonna start with these 1 16th. So I'm just marking the holes with my drill bit here. The truth is I'm only probably gonna do one, maybe two holes. Believe it or not, these M3s are actually bigger than 1 16th, so let's do the next one. Well, there you have it. 
Looks pretty cool already. And it's got the Manfrotto quick clamp at the back. It's a little bit of wiggliness in it. I'll have to tighten everything up, but let's start cleaning up here. So guys, here's my action cam, which you've probably seen a ton of times before. The action cam is on the back of one of these Manfrotto quick clamps. And the great news is with this new setup, you can just pop that in there like that. Now all I need to do is supply power to this. It'll be on the network, go find it, put in my bit of code, and I'll start live streaming through the camera here. Now, let's just get this tipped up so you can imagine what it would look like. And then I can use this little thing for my finer adjustments. Get that exactly the way I want it. Tighten it down. Boom, there you go. That's a pretty cool little piece of kit. Nice little project. You'll find links to all this stuff in the About section below. If you have any questions or comments, post them in the comment section below. If you guys have built something like this or something different, let me know all about it. I really like it when these videos create a little community. So if you're planning on making one of these cameras or you've made one in the past, please stop by the comment section below. Let us know. Tell us what you've done, what problems you've solved and how you went about solving it. For me, I'm pretty happy with this. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it works straight away and you guys can come join me on a live stream. In fact, I'm supposed to be live streaming now. If you guys are waiting for a live stream to happen and it's not happening, it's probably because I've been busy building this all day. Thanks again for tuning in, guys. Don't forget to buy me a coffee in the About section if you found this video particularly useful. Don't forget to check us out on Patreon. Really appreciate that. Thanks to everybody who's already supported us. We'll see you on the live streams. Just one thing I forgot to do is take off all the, take off all this plastic. How cool is that? Check the About section for all the code to get this up and running. So what's next for me is to write out the command line that is going to enable me to stream. The difficult part with this part of it is that I can't share that with you guys because in order for it to stream, I need to put in my unique key at the end of it. So I'll have to leave you there, but thanks again for watching.